Hey guys, this is Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking to you about what is a trap coin. Give you guys some examples, something to learn like last video on the whiteboard. Let's get this video started. So this past week, we got reached out to by a few dealers out of town and they wanted to sell us some coins. And when you take a look at these coins, on the surface, they look great. They look like something that you should buy, something that you could use for your customers. And what we saw and what we figured out over the next few minutes past seeing the photos was that these were all trap coins. And what trap coins are, are, you know, when you're moving into the hobby and you're learning about coins and what to buy and what you should put in your collection, there's certain coins out there that don't disclose everything. Um, you know, if it has to do with the appearance of the coin, how it was graded, where it was purchased, um, what's ethical and right to sell something for. What I slowly start to unveil with the, each coin that I looked at was that these coins were missing key components for us to want to buy them. And it didn't have anything to do with the price, but it more had to do with how they were purchased, what the coins look like in hand as opposed to the photos and things that we learned early on as coin dealers that we now try to avoid because like we said trap coins are when you're entering the hobby some things are missing some things are not disclosed to you because you're learning you'll end up buying a coin that you instantly lose money on as a collector or as an early dealer and so what these videos are trying to show you is that there's things in the hobby that are not fully disclosed to you and we are trying to make it more apparent. So when people enter the hobby, they stick with the hobby, they're excited about what they buy next, and they're not hurt or taken advantage of for not knowing something. So we're gonna show you guys two examples in this video of trap coins from this group of coins that we were offered, and we will show you exactly what we mean by a trap coin. There was one thing that a coin dealer told us when he was going into coin dealing as uh, kind of a part-time, almost full-time position for him. He said if you start off the year with $100,000 and by the end of the year if you go to a bunch of shows and you're not broke by the end, you might make it as a coin dealer. Just because there's so many snares, so many traps sometimes when it comes to certain coins that you can end up losing a lot of money very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. And so what we try to do on this channel is offer you guys some advice when buying coins. Seek a financial advisor if you want to buy a coin or if you want to invest in something, but we just give our opinion. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like. Let's get to the whiteboard. All right, guys, so the first coin I want to talk to you about, which is trap number one, is an 1865 two cent piece. It's great, mid state 65, and it's red. Red is very important, and another key aspect of this coin is that it's also in a Rattler holder. So the condition is very important on every coin. You know, it's mid state 65, it's called a gem. Red is very important, which is basically the color of the surfaces of a copper coin. So this two cent piece was graded mid state 65 red because of its color, and it's also sitting in a Rattler holder. So we're going to talk about the surfaces in just one moment, but let's talk about the Rattler and how it may be appealing, but also deceptive at the same time. So when we were starting out in coin dealing, we started to buy a lot of Rattlers, especially coins that were copper, like two cent pieces. And what we realized is that just because the paper says something doesn't mean it matches the surfaces of the coin. So this coin is, like we said, great mid state 65 red, but since this coin was held in uh, a certain area, the coin actually started to change colors from red to red-brown or possibly brown. And so the way this can be a trap for somebody moving into the hobby that wants to buy a really nice coin like this one appears to be, is that they'll take the piece of paper as face value. They won't really look at the surfaces of the coin and some dealer is waiting for them to stop by their table and sell them on a mint state 65 red that's in a rattler and someone might say drew that's not a big deal you know they marked it red it may be red brown maybe brown um you know there's not a big huge discrepancy in that right drew and i would say that's wrong because uh you know if we look at comps which we will in just a moment we'll actually talk about the surfaces first so 
for someone moving into the hobby, there's three different types of surfaces on copper coins. There's red, which is most of the time the most valuable surface that you want. It's close to mo its most original shape. It didn't change coloring over time to red-brown or brown. Brown is the most turned coin, the most turned a coin can be before it starts to corrode or it starts to get environmental damage. Red brown is just a mixture between these two. So it's very self explanatory once you start to get in the hobby and learn a little bit more. But like we were talking about just a moment ago, red is the most prized as far as copper on, you know, and it's in its value. So the comps are pretty wild and different when you take a look at them. So when I was looking at red comps, the comps were $1,000 plus for a Men's State 65 red two cent piece. Now you ask yourself, well, what's a red brown cost me? Red brown cost me about 400 bucks. So as we're starting to see here, there's a big discrepancy between the, the colors here and the surfaces. So someone walking into a show that's new and wants to invest or buy something, they will look at this and they'll say, man, this 65 red, it's, a, it's at a discount. The dealer's asking only 900 bucks, or he's asking 950 bucks, and they're selling for 1,000. I'm making a great buy here. But if you are an unethical dealer or someone that's wanting to trap somebody in a coin, and you know the coin yourself is red-brown because you've studied the hobby, you've studied coins, you know exactly how they turn, you know that rattlers are susceptible to being held in you know, hot places or they weren't you know, put in the correct places for their surfaces to be preserved, you probably bought this coin uh, you know, for 300 bucks or 350 bucks. But what you do to trap somebody is that you say, hey, based on the paper that they're saying in the holder, this is a 65 red and I'm gonna sell it as a 65 red. And to me, that seems like it's the wrong thing to do, right? So what we would do as an ethical dealer to not trap somebody in the coin is all you would do is you say, hey, whoever you're buying it from, just want to let you know, I know that you bought it for a lot. Someone might have sold you up a creek on it at Miss State 65 Red. But for the next customer that I'm going to sell it to, I need to have it at about $300 to $350 because this coin is now red-brown. And when the coin's red-brown, it doesn't carry the same value as red, even if the paper says it is. And so if I bought this coin at 300 bucks or 350 bucks, then I, the next customer that I would talk to, I would say, hey, it says 65 red, but I want to sell it to you for 400 because red browns sell for that. That's what the surfaces of the coin is, and that's what you should follow. You should look at the coin rather than the piece of paper. And, and so this in itself is a very important lesson for us um, as we were starting to grow. Uh, we just bought coins based on the piece of paper that was inside the case rather than looking at the coin itself and what season collectors are looking for. And so uh, when we were offered this coin, I instantly knew the coin was not red. And so uh, there's a lot of dealers at shows that, you know, they're still getting used to the hobby. They're wanting to uh, volunteer at coin clubs. They're wanting to get into the local shows. And someone's coming around the table with them. And he's saying, hey, bro, just want to let you know this 65 red Rattler, which he knows it's not red. He says, gray sheet is $1,250. I'm going to make you a deal, though. I'm going to sell it to you for 1000 The elderly gentleman or woman that's opening up their gray sheet and sees $1,250, wholesale gray sheet as $1,250, they'll say, man, I'm getting a great deal at 1000 And then what happens? They get trapped because they're not buying it for the red brown price and the person that sold it to them knew that and so a lot of this has to go back to what is ethical what is right and how are we going to preserve the hobby by being ethical and being trustworthy and so like I said when I saw this coin and someone that's wanting to offer it to me for 65 red gray sheet bid that to me instantly smells like a trap and it really just doesn't get me excited about the deal, right? You want to be excited about what you buy because you can offer a great coin to your customers. But I don't want to be trapped and I don't want to trap you guys in something. And so that's why we avoided this coin and we avoided about 10 other coins that they offered because a lot of them had to do 
with something, if you didn't weren't knowledgeable about it, you would be burying your money with them. And so this is very important. Um, make sure to watch out for the surfaces of copper coins. Make sure to also check, you know, uh, recent comps for them. The person that bought this probably bought this on Grade Collections, which isn't really published on PCGS CoinFAX or on Grade Sheet. So make sure to check out Grade Collections as well. If they did buy it in Grade Collections, I'll put it right here for you. If they didn't, then I was wrong. But it's just something that you guys should pick up on and understand when you're at your local coin show or if you're trying to find a great coin for a collector that you know. Let's move on to trap number two. This is an 1882S Morgan dollar. It's great mid state. 66 dimple. It's also an OGH. So, a few things to pick up on. When you're buying coins for collectors, they want something that's fresh. There's two different opportunities that you get when you're a coin dealer. There's the stale opportunities and there's the fresh opportunities. Fresh opportunities are when a coin's been in a collection for a while, or the person that owns it was the original person that sent it in for grading, or they, they inherited it from their dad or their grandfather, and they said, hey, it's time to pass it on to an ethical dealer like yourself, and it's never seen public auction. That's what a fresh coin is. A stale coin, and as stale as you can get it is a coin that someone just bought from an auction and now they're offering it to you like it's something that's fresh. That's a stale coin. And what we try to do the best we can is offer you guys as many fresh coins as possible. So, slight plug, check out our website at cooshcollectibles.com. We have new stuff going up every week. But this coin was as stale as you can get it. And I'm going to talk to you about that right now. So this coin... Well, it ended up being purchased on Legends Auctions for $6,452.50. And you might say, wow, that's a lot of money for a coin. I would agree. Now the question is, why did this coin sell almost $1,000 on a gray sheet bid? And that has to do with the surfaces. See, OGHs, back in the day, they used to give out PLs and dimples like candy. Coins that seemed uh, to look dimple or weren't very dark, or if they thought it was any flashiness at all, they would give it a proof-like or a dimple. So, right? for, so for people in the hobby that are newer, there's Business Strike, which is all of these, but there's proof-like, and there's Deep Mirror proof-like. So reflectivity has to do with how far you can see a 12-point font sentence on a piece of paper. That's kind of how a guy that I know who's a coin dealer, uh, that's how he uses to judge if a coin is business strike proof-like or deep mirror proof-like. Business strikes, you really can't see it. Zero, zero uh, you know, inches. You can't really reflect and see words being written on a piece of paper. For proof like, he says that it has to be four inches or it has to be greater than four inches for it to be proof like. And for deep mirror proof like, it has to be eight inches or more. Now, when I took a look at this coin, when it got auctioned off a very short time ago, the coin didn't feel dimple to me. When you look at the surfaces, they look like they're proof like, maybe business strike. And you can see that by the photos on Legends Auctions. They hold great auctions, but this coin I'm not a fan of. And the reason why I think this is a trap coin is because the auction told you it was not a deep mirror proof like. Because if it was a deep mirror proof like, it would at least hit $7,500 or more. And so when I was taking a look at this coin, I was saying to myself, not only is this coin stale, not only is this coin realized its full potential at auction recently, which makes it much harder for a coin dealer to sell, but it also didn't even hit gray sheet bid. And the reason being is because it's not even dimple. And so the reason why this coin could be a trap coin for you is because once again, we're gonna go back to the Rattler and OGHs. 
The Rattler and OGHs sometimes are not perfect. Back then, they were getting used to grading. They were doing a little bit better at it. But now we have a better picture of what the coins are and their grade and what they should be nowadays. And so I think this is a trap coin, like I said, because this coin not only is not dimple, it's not fresh, but it also is well below gray sheet bid. And so this guy, whoever bought it, is going to walk around a show, he's going to pray a guy opens his gray sheet, and he's going to sell this coin to him for $7,000. Or $72.50. Whatever he beats him down to. And what I try to do to begin with is not buy that coin because why? The coin is not matching what the description says it is. So if I'm going to sell you a coin at $7,500, I better believe that coin is a dimple. Because if that coin is proof like, you can expect this number right here to be half of what it is or even less than that. And so this coin for us also seemed like a very big trap. I'd like to know what your comments are below. And so, uh, yeah, a lot to learn from this. Um, this is just a few of our thoughts on two coins. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you guys want to watch more videos like this, talk about more traps or more things that we're learning about, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on this trap, the trap before it, uh, what would you do in this situation. For us, on the phone call, they were offered to us, and I said, hey, bro, I'm going to pass. At first, I wrote some numbers up, but then I'm like, bro, I'm going to pass. All these coins just seem very skeptical, and they feel like they would trap either a newer dealer or a newer collector if they were sold to them. And so that's something we don't want to do as coin dealers, and that's why we're going to educate you in this video and more videos to come. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like I said, make sure to leave a like. We'll see you guys in the next one.